Alrighty, today we're going to go through the calibration of an exact 70. There's going to be a couple components you're going to need in order to do this process. Um, first, you're going to have to rent, which you can rent from us. Um, it's going to be a calibration fixture. Inside the box, it's going to be similar to this. Included in that box is going to be a set of mirrors. And as well as located inside the fixture itself, you're going to have a few, about five different components. We're going to walk through that here in a moment. The part numbers for this whole assembly you're going to be looking at an 8032595195219 and an 8032595220. You can always back the video up to in order to get that part number. The fixture itself, inside the center of the fixture, uh, located underneath this panel here, you're going to have these five components. You're going to have two large spacers, spacers identical in length, approximately two and a half to three inches. You're going to have two other smaller spacers. One's about an inch, the other one's about half an inch. You also have a level. The mirrors are going to come in two sets. Each set is going to have two mirrors and two brackets. Make sure you take special precautions. Make sure that these mirrors are not dropped, damaged in any means. Any kind of damage to these mirrors can actually inevitably cause your calibration to be off. You're also going to have to find the wires that were actually shipped with your original machine. These are typically located inside the cabinet at the bottom. You've got four wires in total. Two of them are gonna be six and a half meters listed on the white decal. And also two of them are going to be four and a half meters listed on the white decal. Okay, in order to set up the calibration fixture, there's a couple things you're gonna to wanna to pay attention to. Number one, we discussed earlier, the five items that are gonna be located inside this compartment. I would go on ahead and have these removed. Next, you're gonna have three feet. Each of these feet have extensions on the top, threads, and a nut. This nut is actually for adjustment purposes, which we'll hear show in a moment. I would make sure this is loose and very lightly snug it to the base of the actual stem. Go on ahead and set this to the side. You're gonna very carefully flip the fixture over. Wherever you set this fixture up, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that the ground is solid. It could be on the floor, on the base of a lift, obviously not where your alignment pads are. Anywhere that is solid that this assembly will not rock, move, or tilt. Once you have it flipped over and your adjustment nuts are slightly against the stem, go on ahead and screw it in. Once you get to the point of it being snug, go on ahead and hold the stem, take your adjustment nut and very lightly snug it up. Do the same with the other two. Now go ahead and flip the assembly over. As you can tell, there are two feet towards the front, would be considered the front of the vehicle, and on the rear, there's a single. To help identify, there's two things here. You have a level that is located. This would be the identifier for the front driver's side. What you're gonna wanna do next is you wanna go on ahead and take this level and move the bubble to the center of this level by adjusting your feet. Alrighty, now that we have the feet into the fixture and the fixture is upright, Keeping in mind that this is your driver side front identifier, we're gonna to need to get this thing level. What you do is you're going to actually take your stems themselves and they were threaded. You're going to take each one, and I'm just gonna use this as an example. We're gonna rotate this, see how the bubble moves away? Fairly straightforward. So what we're gonna do is this is at its max. We're gonna go on ahead and loosen this side. Bring it over. And I'm gonna keep that loose for a moment. I'm gonna to go to the back side. You're gonna want this bubble as accurate as you can. Once you have it locked in place, make sure that you tighten the stops with your hands as snug as you can. Keep in mind, if you do rotate it, it will move the bubble out of its place. 
Okay, so the next step you're going to want to do is grab the heads off of your exact 70. You're going to want to identify two particular heads, or those are going to be the first ones you're going to put on your fixture. You or your technician is probably already aware that there are different heads for different placements on the vehicle, such as this one, this, the extension here, you have a blocked off port and an open port. The blocked off port is not used, obviously. This port here in this placement would be passenger side rear. The open port would be on the passenger side front facing that direction. The extension moving towards or exiting the rear of the vehicle. On this head here, we have two open ports. You could have one here, one here, and your extension. This one would be considered the driver side front. You have an open port that would connect to the uh, driver side rear head, and you have the open port on the front. That open port on the front would actually be used to run between the head and the exact 70 base unit itself. The two heads you're going to want to grab first are going to be your front driver side and your front passenger side head. So grab both heads with two open ports first. Okay. So what I have done here is I went on ahead and placed the heads and their orientation for our calibration fixture. We have your front driver side head with your two open ports, front passenger side head with your two open ports. The driver side rear head has the open port facing the front, closed port towards the rear. Same thing on the rear passenger side, we have the open port towards the front, closed port towards the rear. We're also going to be needing to locate the level that you had originally located inside this compartment on your calibration fixture. We're gonna be needing that in order to level these heads on this fixture. As I said before, make sure you identify the two front heads first. If you put the rear head on the fixture first, the fixture will want to tilt over and you can damage your heads. So you'll actually be placing the front fixtures on first, just like you would. This has the extension that you've located on a car fixture before, the car mount. So we're gonna go ahead and mount this to the fixture just like you would on a car. Just very carefully push the indentation button in, locate it, make sure it doesn't come off. It should be free floating. Do the passenger side front, same way. Make sure it locks, doesn't come off and it's free floating. We're gonna do the same thing for the rear heads. Okay, so after the heads are already mounted to the calibration fixture, the next thing is gonna to be to level them. So what this is going to do is in this process, we're going to be resetting what this head is going to be considering to be level, such as the lights that you use when you place this and you level it on a vehicle. So the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna take the level, we're gonna place it anywhere in between this area. It doesn't matter whether it's back here or up here, it's completely benign. So we're gonna place it, then all we're gonna do is we're gonna level the head with the bubble and tighten it down on the stem. Just like we did the bubble before for the fixture, the more accurate you are, the more accurate the machine will be. So once you get it to that point, I recommend you snug this down pretty good. Now, this is a brass set screw inside of a nut insert. So you don't wanna crank it down with a wrench, but I would recommend applying a sufficient amount of pressure to make sure this is nice and tight. This fixture will be moved during the calibration procedure, so we don't want this head moving around. You're gonna to wanna to do the same thing with all four heads. Okay, so after your heads are all level, the fixture is level and it's on a surface that's not gonna move, you're gonna go ahead and grab the four cables you grabbed earlier. You've got two of them that are shorter at four and a half meters and two of them that are longer at six and a half meters. It doesn't matter where you use the cables on the actual fixture or the heads, um, as long as you have sufficient length between your two front heads and the actual main EX70 itself. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna connect between the rear port on each front head to the front port on each rear head. They just clip in. They do the same thing on the other side. You're gonna use your two other cables to connect from the front port on the front head to either port on the back of your exact 70. When you plug these in, you're gonna see that the heads actually turn on. They're supposed to do that. If they don't, you're gonna to want to contact technical support. They will beep when they turn on. Okay, 
At this point, you're gonna go on ahead and start the actual calibration procedure. Everything from this point forward cannot be moved unless the PC tells you to do so. So this is level as we've done earlier. These are all level, everything's hooked up, everything's on. You don't want to try and maneuver any of these. If you do happen to knock one of the heads out of level or you know you knocked it out of place, you'll have to completely restart this calibration procedure. Um, even if you do bring it back to level, these are highly sensitive pieces of equipment. Um, it'll actually most likely fail the calibration at the end of the procedure. Um, during this whole process, um, just take your time, um, work at your own pace, and you'll have a successful calibration. So the first thing we're gonna do is on the computer, we're gonna choose the wrench and screwdriver, which is at the bottom. The first one up, if you leave your mouse cursor over it, it'll state head calibration. It's identified just like the fixture here, facing up, down. You see your four heads on the photo. If you give it a moment, it's gonna start reading for all four heads. And as you notice, these are no longer grayed out. The third one over, if you leave your mouse cursor over it, it says full scale calibration. What that will do is that will completely run through the calibration procedure, um, basically from zero, which is what we wanna do. So at this point, these numbers here will tell you what the heads are reading. In the middle, it tells you what you should be doing. You see it has four mirrors for each four heads. So you're gonna grab your mirror with a bracket. The way this works is you have your bracket, you have two extensions with holes, you have two pins, you also have a lower pin and a flat machine surface. These line up into the pins, the machine surface actually rests itself against this metal plate, just like this. You're gonna take these, there are two pin locators on each bracket, they line up into two pin holes at the top of each of your heads. Very lightly place it into the pinholes. Make sure it's completed, seated completely vertically and there is no movement. Place it in, sit it. We're gonna do that for all four heads. So now that all your mirrors are seated, you can tell that all these numbers have turned green and the continue is no longer grayed out. The software is intelligent enough to know that if things are out of spec or too far out of spec to be calibrated, it won't let you proceed. So we're gonna go on ahead and click continue. You give it a moment, it's saving what it's currently reading. Now, these numbers will change and it is now gonna have you take the same bracket and mirror assembly that you currently have on the insides of the heads, we're gonna move them out to the outer extensions. So now we're gonna take the mirror and hanger, we're gonna place them with the two pins inside the two pin holes on the camera of each extension. Just as before, you can even use a pinching method to pinch the bracket into connection. You wanna make sure it's completely seated and it's solid. You're gonna do that with all four cameras. Okay, now that your cameras have the mirrors hanging on the extensions, you noticed the numbers are now green again. It'll allow you to proceed. Now we're going to completely remove all the mirrors and it's going to self-check itself. Give it a moment. You noticed everything's green. I'm going ahead and click continue. And at this point, we can remove the mirrors. After you've removed the mirrors, it's gonna go ahead and proceed to this screen here. Again, you have your red and green numbers. This time you can tell, you can see your two stems that you recently adjusted to actually keep the fixture level. And you see two of the spacers that were included inside of the center pack of the fixture. Those two that you're gonna to want to grab are gonna be the tallest, approximately one and a half to two inches in height. Now to give a representation of which spacers you're going to need, these are the two tall ones. This is the only one that actually comes in a pair. And you've got medium and you've got a small. 
the two you need are the tallest. What you have to do is you have to very carefully lift this fixture and place these under the stems. One thing to keep in mind is even as these stems are tight into the frame with that lock nut, if you rotate them, it will pull this out of level where you had started the calibration. As I had said before, any kind of adjustments to this fixture from the beginning of the calibration will throw the calibration off. So we're gonna take one, I'm gonna very carefully, because there is a lot of weight, lift and slide the spacer underneath. We're gonna do the same to the other front stem. Keeping your arms away from the actual heads, very carefully lift. Place the stem, very carefully lay it on the stem. Now that your spacers are in place, if you notice all your red numbers have turned green, it's accepted the values. Your continue option is now available. Go on ahead and click that. Now we're going to remove the two from the front and take one of the pair and place it under the rear stem. Okay, so just as we had done with putting the actual spacers under the stems, we're going to take a lot of precaution in removing them. So very carefully, lower the assembly down while you're removing both of these spacers. We're going to take one of the spacers that we just removed and we're going to place it on the rear. like that. After you've placed that spacer in, the software is updated, your red numbers are now green, you have the option to continue. Now we're going to take the medium and small spacer that was provided with the other two spacers we just used. We're going to be placing the medium to the passenger side front stem and the small or low profile to the rear middle stem. Now that you have grabbed your medium and your small spacer to give you a reference, we're going to very carefully remove this spacer and insert the lowest profile spacer. I find it easiest to go on ahead and replace the spacer with this while you have it in the air. Now we're going to take the medium spacer and place it on the front passenger side stem. Again, being very careful, lift the assembly, place the spacer under the stem. Now that you have your spacers installed, your red numbers have turned green and it's ready to proceed. Now we're going to take the medium spacer we had under the, actually currently have under the passenger stem we're gonna be removing it and placing it under the stem on the driver's side. We're gonna very carefully remove the spacer from the front passenger. I'm going to place the same spacer under the front driver's side stem. Now that the spacer has been moved over, the computer is updated and provided green numbers and the opportunity to proceed. At this point, we'll remove all spacers and the computer will actually test the data from where it is now to where it was when you first started. This is where it is imperative that you had taken precautions in not knocking into the heads um, during this calibration procedure. We're going to go on ahead and remove the spacers, carefully placing the fixture back onto the surface. Now that we removed all the spacers, the numbers are green again. We have the opportunity to proceed. Now what it's going to do is it's going to update the head calibration. This is going to take a few moments. The heads themselves actually store the calibration parameters. The machine itself does not actually have any of the parameters in them. 
So if you have to do any kind of software update or anything on your EX70 database update, etc., your calibration stays with the heads. So you don't actually have to recalibrate anything on your machine. At this point, everything is zeroed out. You've probably heard some of your heads beep at this point. They've been reprogrammed. We're going to hit continue. You can use your initials. This stores um, the actual calibration parameters inside the PC as a log. You can just press enter. If you give it a few moments, these zeros will change. Don't be alarmed by that. That does not mean the heads aren't calibrated. That's just raw data entering the computer. But at this point, your calibration is successful and you can move forward. Now that your calibration is successful, we want to go ahead and safely remove the heads off the fixture and pack the fixture back up for shipping. As we've done in the beginning, we had placed the two front heads, the front driver's side and passenger side head on first. We're going to want to remove them last where the fixture can tilt over and you could damage your heads, possibly having you uh, to recalibrate and you run this procedure again. So go ahead and remove both rear heads first. You can place these back in your charging cradles. As you can tell, obviously it's stable. So then you would remove your front heads. When you do repack these, make sure you place all five of your components your four spacers and your level back in the compartment on the frame, unscrew all three stems and pack it back in with the mirrors inside the box, making sure they're all secure so they come back safely.